I'm back. Okay, so I looked into downloading the software and bad news, it's a monthly payment which I am not willing to make. So I will not be downloading the software, which means we're just going to have to deal with the no audio uh, of the computer and things like that. I would have preferred it if it was like a once off, you buy the software and you can use it. I'm sure there probably is something out there that does that, but I haven't found it. And so a few notes. I am aware I've got like this breathing thing. Um, I don't know how to control my breathing, so just try to ignore it as best you can. Um, yeah. And there were a few historical inaccuracies in the previous thing that I spoke about. Um, but it's not too bad, so I'm not going to address it. And to be honest, none of that is going to be asked. So don't worry about not knowing it. So the last time I left off, we stopped with capitalism. I said it's a economic system based on private ownership and profit. Um, one of the other things that they have asked in the past is to find the term communism. What you can take from that is communism, basically just the opposite of capitalism. So we did communism in grade, uh, sorry, distracted. We did communism in grade 11 um, when we did the Russian Revolution. And um, it's basically an economic system where the government owns everything, the state owns everything, and um, everything is centralized. Um, no individual owns anything. So imagine if you have a farm, under capitalism, that is your farm. But under communism, that farm belongs to the state. It belongs to everyone who lives in the state, meaning the things that you produce is not yours. It belongs to government. You are not going to make any profit because government is going to take what you have created. So very much the opposite of capitalism. Uh, one of the words you'll be familiar with uh, is the word national nationalizing, which basically means taking things that are privately owned and making it government owned. So you need to be able to, in the exams coming up, define the term capitalism, define the term communism, it has come up in the past, so I'm stressing those two terms are very important for you to know. Um, the next thing we're going to discuss is the Cuban Missile Crisis. So as you know, this is the main idea of the topic that we'll be discussing. So if you look in your textbooks, those of you that have textbooks, you'll see that the Cuban Missile Crisis basically counts as topic one, and it's part of the Cold War. Um, you guys did your research ta task on uh, communist China, so you will be aware of the Cold War is a massive topic, and we are only focusing on one section of it, which is Cuban Missile Crisis. Basically, it's the closest the world has ever come to a full-out nuclear war, which basically would have left everybody dead. Um, luckily, I didn't get to that. It was a 13-day confrontation between the United States and the Soviet Union um, where each one was trying to one-up the other. So you guys will remember in the previous video, I spoke about brinkmanship and um, the Cuban Missile Crisis was just one big, big episode of brinkmanship where America and the USSR were just trying to one-up the other all the time. Um, as you can see from the glossary, it states that it was started because the United States had missiles in Italy and Turkey, which freaked out the Soviet Union because it was very close to their borders. So the Soviet Union actually wanted to have a one-up on America, which is why they got involved with Cuba. We'll discuss that in a bit more detail when we actually get into the topic, but basically what you need to understand, Cuban Missile Crisis, everybody has bombs. USA has bombs, Russia has bombs, and they're pointing the bombs at each other. Nobody wants to set the bombs off. Okay, so the next thing you need to know, I've added this to the glossary. It wasn't in the glossary before, but it was something I picked up last year that the kids got this in the exam and they didn't know what it meant. So it's been added now, and the word is deployment. 
when something is deployed once again i'm so happy for coronavirus and covid i, I know that sounds weird but hear me out because these words are appearing in the news and in the newspapers so i'm sure you've heard that the army has been deployed right they've been deployed to make sure that people stay in their houses and adhere to the lockdown so if you hear that a missile has been deployed or troops have been deployed it basically means moving them into a position where they can act very quickly so for example during a normal peaceful time soldiers will be at the army base but when it's wartime they get sent to um, different positions like Cape Town or Gauteng so that they can prepare for action. Um, so in the Cuban Missile Crisis they will often speak about the missiles being deployed. Um, this is just for you to be aware of it when you encounter it in the sources. I may have gone into a bit more detail about something that isn't actually that big of a deal, but it is something that I encountered in the past where kids were unable to answer the question because they didn't know what the word deploy meant. Um, then the Eastern Bloc, it's basically the Soviet Union and all the communist countries in Europe. Okay, so if you hear the word Eastern Bloc, we're thinking, basically if you look at a world map, Okay, wait, let me pause this and pull up a world map. I think that would be better. Okay, sorry about that, but here we go. I have pulled up a uh, map of basically how the world looked during the Cold War. The blue... Rip oh, uh, oh, uh, sorry. It's just something I realized that is a better way to explain it. Just give me a second. Sorry, my dog. Okay, apologies for that. My dog started barking in the background. You know, working from home probably. But, um, so basically, I had this idea, like, you know how South Africa is always referred to as, like, a third world country? Have you ever thought about what it means to be third world? Where did this term come from? So basically, what was happening from 1947 to 1941, you know, that's the period of the Cold War, and basically the whole world had to choose a side. You were either on the side of the USA and America, same thing, um, and capitalism, or you were on the side of the Soviet Union and communism. If you chose not to choose, <laughs> that makes sense, you were considered a third world country. So if you were anti-communist, if you were capitalist, you were referred to as the first world. Um, and then if you were communist, you were referred to as the second world. Now you'll notice that we don't use the term second world anymore. That is because communism collapsed in about the 1989, 1990s, around about there. <laughs> I guess if we use this picture, we can say 1991. And therefore we don't use the term second world anymore. Um, a lot of countries still call themselves communist, but no country has actually followed the communist principles um right so you've now seen this picture you've seen how the world was divided during the cold war and now we can get back to what we were doing i apologize for my adhd that i'm always so easily distracted <laughs> okay and we are back so the second world that I was speaking about was the Eastern Bloc. So anybody that agreed with communism, that was the Eastern Bloc. Anyone that agreed in capitalism, they were considered the Western Bloc. And then anyone that didn't choose a side was the third world. So moving down, uh, there's some points that will come up. We are not going to do glasnost. Um, in the past, when I did this topic, I did the fall of communism as well. But I'm not doing it anymore, so I'm not going to explain that. Actually, I think I'll take that out. Um, Iron Curtain, hmm, nah, not, not important. And I have spoken about MAD before, Mutually Assured Destruction. The idea that if either of the two big boys, America or Russia, uses their nuclear weapons, they will wipe each other out. So that is called Mutually Assured Destruction or MAD. Um, then you've got Marxism. You'll remember Karl Marx from um, last year, grade 11. 
basically he's the guy that came up with communism. So just in case you encounter a word, you might encounter it, Marxism, Leninism, uh, that word just basically means communism. Okay, so it's, a, it's how they adapted communism to suit them. So it moves away from Marx's model and more towards their own model. But if you see it, know that it means it's just another word for communism. I'm simplifying it a lot because I teach high school, not university. So, yeah, just for the people that I know are going to criticize me and say it's not the same thing. Um, so we'll just deal with it. In a high school level, all you need to know, Marxism, Leninism, uh, communism, same thing. Okay, so NATO is the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Basically, everything that um, the Western countries got together and how they basically um, tried to stop the spread of communism. Um, their group was called NATO. It's not really necessary for you to know it, but it's good for your own enrichment purposes. In the past, when they used to do Vietnam and stuff, then you needed to know this, but they don't do it anymore. Uh, nuclear weapon. So a nuclear weapon is a device that uses nuclear forces to create a huge explosion capable of destroying an entire city. So that's difficult to wrap your head around, but it's basically the idea that if someone were to drop a bomb right now, they could wipe out the entire kingdom. That is the power of a nuclear weapon. So there's about a couple of hundred thousand people, I don't know, living in Cape Town, maybe a million. I, uh, I shouldn't say things that I cannot verify. But there's a lot of people living in Cape Town. And you can just imagine, somebody drops a bomb, and we're basically all wiped out. We'd have something like two, three minutes notice, and then... Bleh, we're dead. So that's why everybody is scared of nuclear weapons. Uh, the next one I'm going to skip because it's in the end of the Cold War, which we are not going to do. And then the term proxy war. So think of it like when you were small and you used to have your little Barbies and your Kins and you would make them kiss if you were that kind of person or if you were uh, maybe somebody that preferred playing with G.I. Joes and you would make them fight each other, right? So that's basically what a proxy war is. The United States had their little Barbies and Kins, and the Soviet Union had their little G.I. Joes. And what they would do is they would put these two small people against each other. So why would they do that? Um, the reason they do that is because if the United States and Soviet Union were to meet face to face and actually have what they call a hot war, where they actually use their weapons and especially using their nuclear weapons, they could wipe each other out. So to avoid that, what they would do is they would give weapons and they would give money to smaller countries to fight on their behalf. So, for example, I know a lot of people are uh, familiar with North Korea and South Korea. North Korea wanted to be communist. South Korea wanted to be capitalist. So United States was sponsoring South uh, Korea and Soviet Union was sponsoring North Korea. Uh, same thing happened in Vietnam as well. This whole fight between communism and capitalism and it's called proxy wars. So the last one I'm going to do is maybe I can get up to seven I say, but let's see how far I get. I've got like two minutes. Let's see. So Red Scare was extreme anti-communism so you guys will know that the color red is associated with communism so in america everyone was scared that the communists would infiltrate government and they would turn america into a communist country so the government actually used that to get the people on their side when they did things so whenever they sponsored a war or went into one of these proxy wars they would say we are stopping the spread of communism and the people would be on board because they didn't want to be communists oh my word these communists they just take everything that's yours and i'm going to stop there because i am already on 14 minutes and 26 seconds Maybe I can do satellite states. 30 seconds. Satellite state, it's formally independent, but it's under the control. Okay, I shouldn't do this. There's no way I can explain this in 30 seconds. Okay. I am so sorry. I'm so ADHD. Okay, so I am going to stop it there. Um, I cannot edit because I don't have the premium software, so you're going to have to hear my ramblings. I apologize. 
Um, right, so signing off. See you in another five minutes.